Let's make a game. You should have seen Main Menu Version 1 for an introduction to state machines, and Main Menu Version 2 for a more efficient state machine. Now, we are going to show an example of how to implement Version 2 into a game that you might already have. Let's head over to nerdyteachers.com and grab one of our bite-sized games. Go into Tutorials, Bite-sized Games, Ooh, let's pick Cells, because it doesn't use any sprites or map, just pure code. So if we go down to the full code here, and copy it all, then we've got the whole game. Alright, let's go back to Pico 8. But before I paste it in, let's set up our tabs first. We can have one tab for all of the init functions, another tab for all of the update functions, and another tab for all of the draw functions. And let's use this next tab to paste the game code into for now. Alright, we have a couple custom functions in this game. One for creating enemies, another for collision, and this line right here is how Pika8 knows where to separate the code into tabs. So this game was already written to have multiple tabs, and we just copied the raw code that included the code for new tabs. So we can get rid of them since we are organizing the tabs ourselves in a new way. So let's leave the custom functions in this tab number 3, and go to the top and name this tab Custom Functions. Let's start from the top. This game uses the main underscore init function. So let's copy this and move it to the init tab. Paste that in. And this is actually the game state's initializing function. So let's name it init game. So what we are doing is taking a bite-sized game that only has one state, the game state, using three main functions, init, update, and draw and we're simply converting those functions into specific state functions, which will free up underscore init, underscore update, and underscore draw for us to use as the main state machine. So let's continue doing that with the old game code. The next function is for the game's update code. See, it's using the main underscore update function to update the game, so we'll rename it update game. Cut all of this, control X, and go to the updates tab, and paste it, control V. And of course, do the same with the draw code. Now, we've taken a pre-made game and prepared the game's init, update, and draw functions to be used in their own game state. Next, let's build another state, like a main menu. So let's also create an init menu function. You could set more variables here that you would want to use in your main menu, and you probably should, to make your main menu look way better than this example. But all we need are two special variables, the main update and draw functions. Underscore update equals update menu and underscore draw equals draw menu. We don't have those functions yet, so we just have to write them in their appropriate tabs. Let's start with drawing the menu to the screen. Simple, like the earlier tutorials function draw menu clear screen print press x to start in the middle of the screen and to check if the player presses x we use an update function so in the updates tab function 
update menu, check if a button is pressed like X, and then we want to initialize the game. What we did in the last video was this, underscore update equals update game, underscore draw equals draw game. But I like to keep this inside of a states init function. So when I want to change states, I just call an init function like this, init game parentheses. Remember that we write the parentheses when we want to call the function to run. Now I can move this code into the init game function down here after all of the game variables get set. looking good. We have all the functions needed for a main menu state and for a gameplay state. But as it is, Pico8 will have no idea where to start because we aren't telling it to actually run any of these functions yet. So we should create the main underscore init function and use this to tell Pico8 which game state to start in. And let's start the menu by calling the initialize menu function init menu with parentheses. And let that set the main update and draw functions. We could make some shortcuts here because this is like telling Mary to call Joe to wake up Billy when we could have just woken up Billy ourselves. And you could do that for the very first state that you start in to save some lines of code but I just want to establish the pattern from the very beginning of using a custom init function to set the update and draw functions for each state. Init menu, init game, you could have init title screen, init game over, etc., etc. And inside of each init state function, we should be setting the variables needed specifically for that state, and then change the game state by setting the update and draw functions. And that should be all we need to get this game working with multiple states now. Control R to run, press X, and yes, it fully loads the game. The original bite size game simply restarts the whole game by calling underscore init, which now runs init menu, and so puts you right back to the main menu. From here, we could create a game over state to play something like a death animation so that there is more of a transition back to the main menu, but you get the idea, so I'm going to stop here. Good luck with your games. I'm sure you'll make some fantastic main menus and other game states. If you're having trouble implementing this style of game states, leave us a question. And by subscribing, you're really motivating us to make more. Thanks.